But before I do that, what I want to say, what shipping is not about, the answer is not about asset play. I mean, I hear many, of course, many ship owners say, you know, we trade ships, not cargo, and your aim is to buy the ship cheap, sell it well, and make a fortune. You, you can definitely do that. I mean, John Fredrickson, the Norwegian ship owner, has made billions doing buying and selling things, and he's extremely good at it. And some people can, just like there are some people who can go to the casino and, or go to a game of poker and they can consistently make a living by um, playing poker or they can do day trading of shares online and they make a living. But that doesn't mean that is what the serious world is about. It means it's something that you, you could, it's the crumbs that fall off the table. What the serious world of shipping is about is cheaper freight. That is the goal. It's always the same thing. And this is the history, if you can read this properly. It's not a very good chart. I wonder if... Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I'm afraid my lines haven't shown up very well. But what I've done is to take the freight chart in the previous uh, diagram, this one, and I've corrected it for inflation. So this is money at the time. And it's pretty astonishing that the money you were charging... Um, uh, for freight in dollars uh, only a few years ago is not much different from the money you were charging in the 150 years ago. Not many other industries can say that. So what I've do is, done is to correct this for inflation. And this is the chart. You can't see it, but it wiggles around here. That's the trend. And it's going up for the reasons that I mentioned in my uh, previous comments that the freight rates went up because the sailing ships were facing increasing costs. So during the, the 19th century, 18th century, the shipping industry was stuck. It wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't doing its job properly. It needed a revolution. It got the revolution from fossil fuels and cheap coal and bigger ships. That's what it managed to do. And you see that by progressively getting better steam engines, better ships, it moved along this track, and the, the cost of freight fell steadily between 1830 and 1914. And then we have a bit of an interim between the wars, and we come to the next phase, which was 1945 to 1986, where the freight rate, the real freight rate, continues to fall, and the reason it continues to fall is because of mechanisation. I'm going to go through that a little bit more with you. But basically, the, in 1945, there was a radical change which allowed the industry to introduce a whole new range of technology. And finally, 1987 to 2013, I'm afraid this is a bit unfortunate, my key. Um, that is the trend. It starts to go up again. In the last 20 years, the unit cost of freight has been going up. And let's just focus on this little bit of the part chart. Okay, this bit here. Let's see. Now, this is that bit of the chart. And you can see how the mechanization um, between 1947 and 1987 reduced the freight cost by 75% in real terms. That is a very good result for the industry. Then, from 1987 to 2011, it started to go up again. And my argument, which I will put forward in, in the next few slides, is that during this period, we had, by, we'd squeezed all the value out of mechanization technology, and actually, we were facing the problem of diminishing returns in terms of physical mechanization plus the fossil fuels, which are a very big part of this cost reduction, um, starting to go up in value. So you had two big problems working simultaneously against the industry.